September 8, 2023, we boarded the plane in Chicago, headed to Zurich, Switzerland, and then on to Rome. We were so excited to be heading to Italy. Then this happened. We hit birds just as we were about to take off and had to sit on the tarmac on the plane for two hours before being towed back to the terminal. It was a complete and utter nightmare as we had to wait for an hour to get our luggage and go find a hotel. The next day, us, along with hundreds of other passengers, were rerouted to Munich, Germany on Lufthansa, and off we went. We arrived in Munich and were loaded onto buses to transport us to our next plane. We finally arrived in Rome, were picked up by our private driver, and settled into the car for our drive into Rome city center. It was a relief to finally arrive. That is called Porta Aurelia. The city and the streets were really crowded as we made our way into town to our hotel. We finally arrived at our really cute Airbnb, which was a little room uh, right above a little piazza with restaurants and bars. The atmosphere below was vibrant. There were people walking around. We had beautiful views of nice buildings. And one thing that was the best about this was the location. Just right around this corner, right here, took us straight over to Piazza Navona. <laughs> After Piazza Navona, we made our way to the Pantheon, and it was a sight to behold. There were so many people there, but the building itself was so amazing and something to see. Unfortunately, we got there too late. Our tickets we had purchased were passed, and the doors were closed, but we still were able to look around and walk underneath the huge columns and check everything out. The Pantheon is a former temple and is round except for the large portico with humongous Corinthian granite columns. It's something to see. Almost 2,000 years after it was built, the Pantheon's dome is still the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. A few blocks away, we made our way to the Trevi Fountain. Oh, there it is. And it's a lot of people here. Because of our flight situation, we were late making it to Rome. Therefore, we did not make it to Trevi Fountain early in the morning, which is the best time to see it without the crowds around. We did a little more sightseeing, stopping at various churches along the way before we finally made it to a restaurant near the Piazza Navona for our first meal in Rome. The next day we boarded the train in Rome, headed to La Spezia Centrale, that's where you go to get on the Cinque Terre Express that takes you into the different villages on the Cinque Terre. The train ride itself is quite pretty and the seating arrangement is a little interesting, but it was a lot of fun. While you're in La Spezia, you will purchase your Cinque Terre Express passes. 
Of the five villages we chose Manarola to stay in, I chose a sweet little spot at the top of the, vill of the village. And while it was amazing views and gorgeous, remember what goes up must come down. But it was worth it because the views were spectacular. We could see the terraced orchards and vineyards across the way and the views of the sea were unbelievable. The sunsets were amazing. We had our own private little balcony where we could eat outside in the mornings and a little wash basin over the, to the side, which we never used, but it was really pretty. The views though is what we came for and they did not disappoint. I have some other views a little bit later I'll show you, but as you can see, you just can't beat it. As mentioned, what goes up must come down. So we chose to come down, walking through the narrow pathways and stairways through the village headed back down to the bottom. It had also really gorgeous views along the way. And of course I had to stop and take some photos just like other people were doing. The, the pathways between all the buildings are small and narrow and there are lots of steps. So just get ready for that if you decide to stay in one of these villages that is perched high on the mountains like we did. But you just keep following it down, all the way down, down the stairways until you reach the main area of the town, which is where the restaurants and the people walking around are. After strolling around and having some dinner, we made our way back up to our Airbnb to catch one of their gorgeous sunsets. Wow, we loved staying there. The next day, we boarded the Cinque Terre Express, headed to Vernazza. Welcome to Vernazza. Vernazza is a shopper's paradise, but gee, it was crowded. Probably the most crowded village of all that we visited. It was really warm and very humid while we were there, so we went in search of a place to cool off. It goes out to the sea. Taking a break in Vernazza. Is it hot? Hot. It's very hot, except right here, the best spot. Best spot of the day. We have a cool breeze coming in. We made our way to the harbor to dip our toes in the water, just trying to cool off a bit. Whew, it was hot. After Vernazza, we headed to Cornelia, and as you can see, the crowds were so thick. I must say, Cornelia is one of my favorite villages. Mm, smells good. Let's go up. Oh, it smells good here. It's so pretty through here. Mmm. Yeah. 
Cornelia is such a lovely place to visit. And I think if I had to do it all over again, I would spend a little bit more time here. I will have to say, this is probably one of the best sandwiches I had was here in Cornelia. Lots of bars and lots of eating places. Continue walking straight through the village and you'll end up facing the sea and what a spectacular view. It was so gorgeous and we ended up getting there right around lunchtime and were able to grab a table at this little place on the left. If you stop there, please eat there. This is where I had the best sandwich ever. Beautiful day for lunch outdoors. So refreshing. So good. Just the way. Yeah, that'd be terrible with that part. I'll do it again. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Mm. Yum. Crispy on the outside and soft, yummy on the inside. Just what I wanted. After leaving Cornelia, we headed back to Manaroa for a sunset cruise I had booked with Tony. If you have a chance to take a cruise with this guy, book it. I do include some information here for you. We had a blast and it was one of the highlights of our trip. Tony's sunset cruise was so much fun, and he does stop along the way a couple of times and lets you swim in the sea, which we both did. The first time we went swimming, though, I was stung by a jellyfish twice, so the second time he stopped, I decided to just watch my hubby instead of going back in. I was a chicken. Tony is a great host and he keeps lots of beverages and food on board for you. There are snacks to be had and your cup is never empty with Prosecco and beer, whatever you choose. It was just a fabulous evening with a lot of great memories we will never forget. After that lovely evening, the next day we boarded the train and headed over to Rio Maggiore. We're entering the tunnel going to Rio Maggiore. When you enter Rio Maggiore, 
you will see the streets gradually incline as you head up the mountain, but it's not too steep, so really not a bad walking. There's quite a lot of places to eat and lots of goodies, but we just decided to get some fried foods that we were wanting to try and grab a spot in the park on a bench. Cheap rice balls stuffed with ragu and tomato sauce. Yummy. This is how you go to the bathroom. Okay. Go on. Rio Maggiore is one of the larger towns and has quite a lot to look at and some amazing views as well. We really like this town or this village. The last village we visited was Monteroso El Mare. And if you're looking for some beach time, this is the place to be. It also is more flat. It's easier to walk and has lots of great shopping. Relaxing on the beach in Monteroso al Mare. My hubby's in the water, but I'm just lounging here on the beach. If we ever make it back to Cinque Terre, Monteroso El Mare may be our choice to stay. The best purchase ever, a fan. You need one if you come here to Cinque Terre. Attention, please. We made it back, walking through the tunnel to Manaroa to spend our last night on the Cinque Terre. It was definitely an experience we will never forget and hope to be back here one day. I'm sure you are aware that all the villages are connected by hiking paths, some taking an hour or two or more. Unfortunately, we did not get to do that because my husband was having some ankle issues, but next time it will be a must. Oh, let me get it. Oh no, he's got a rare smile. <laughs> One thing to note, if you're using paper tickets, be sure to get them validated in these little green boxes. Put it in, make sure it stamps it, and you hear the click, 
and make sure you're good to go. They will be checking them on occasion. The next morning, we made it back to La Spezia Centrale. We had a few hours to kill, so we had breakfast in a piazza and did some shopping. Again, it was really warm, so make sure you're prepared for warm and humid weather when you come visit, especially in September. See you on the next one.